Oh! You know, when I was a teenager, I was a pin boy, and when someone would knock them down like that, my job was to set them up. But bowling alleys have sure changed a lot over the years. Even the small bowling alleys like this one are all automated these days. At least the game of bowling has stayed pretty much the same over the years. Except in the Maritimes, bowlers play a game that you don't see anywhere else in Canada. In fact, in Douglastown, New Brunswick, it's the only game in town. Douglastown lies on the banks of the Miramichi River in northeastern New Brunswick. The main street of the village is actually a major highway, so there's a lot of traffic here. But most of the action, especially on Fridays and Saturdays, is at the Miramichi Bolorama. Now, if you think these pins look a little bit different and fall a whole lot differently, well, you're right. This is candle pin bowling, and in New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, it's the only bowling game they'll play. Here, they insist on using very tiny balls and incredibly skinny pins. 50 cents, please. Marianne and Greg Colburn run this bowlerama, and to them, candle pin is the undisputed kingpin of bowling. It's harder. It's more of a challenge to any bowler. It requires the greatest degree of accuracy and consistency in order to get a reasonably good score. It's terribly frustrating on occasion. There's a reason for the frustration and hence the challenge. Consider these dimensions. Ten candle pins placed in the form of an equilateral triangle 12 inches apart. Now the ball is only four and a half inches in diameter, so it can conceivably roll right between the pins, hitting nothing in its path. But at least it's not quite as tough as it was when Justin White and Jack Muncy invented the game back in 1880 in Massachusetts. At that time, the pins were 12 inch long broomsticks. The game didn't reach Canada until the early 1930s, and then it only got as far as New Brunswick and Nova Scotia, where it has stayed. No one knows for sure why Candlepin hasn't spread to the rest of the country, but it just may be because Maritimers are better at geometry and physics. Candlepin is the only game that leaves fallen pins in play, and you must categorically figure out where to place the ball to get the rest of the pins that are still standing, knock down. All other bowling games retrieve or remove the fallen pins in between balls. So these fallen pins become knocker-downers. Or getter-in-the-wayers. Sounds more like pool now. You're mm -hmm. gonna deflect this dead wood into mm -hmm. other ones? And yes. That, that sounds like pool. Right, and you're gonna carry them balls off the dead wood into standing pins. Mm -hmm. Angle of incidence would equal angle of reflection if you want to use... Run methods. that by me again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we know how to hold the ball mm -hmm. like this, and right. it's left leg, right leg, left leg, right. throw. Right. But what's that business about the uh, angle of incidence and the angle of reflection? Actually, you'd be better off with a domino principle. Okay? Domino. You've got an equilateral triangle down there. Mm -hmm. Stand in the center, throw in the head pin, let the domino principle do it for you. Domino principle. Right. I wonder what Newton would say about that. All right, left leg, here we go. Let's see what we can do. <sighs> Maybe it's uh, Bernoulli's theory. You got a slide rule? I don't think that's gonna help, Wade. Greg knows bowling inside and out. He services and repairs most of the machines himself. And in the summer, when he and Mary Ann aren't holidaying at a bowling convention, Greg travels to other bowling centers to resurface lanes. Bowling is in their daughter Sarah's blood, too. Every day after school, she's at the Bowlerama helping out. But unlike her parents, Sarah still has time to play her favorite sport. She bowls in a youth league every Saturday morning. While on a nearby lane, her dad coaches the Smurfs, the four to seven-year-olds. That's it. Keep your head straight. Okay. Great. 
of course, candle pin bowling isn't just for the young folks. It's also for the young at heart. You're in the Pepsi generation. <laughs> the seniors of the Miramichi region have been perfecting their game for years. Their league is quite possibly the liveliest one in the center. There are 12 teams in the seniors league and three ladies who are 84 years young. They're here to meet people get some exercise, and just generally have a good time. But sometimes someone will bowl an amazing game, like Richard Reed. Richard has been candle pin bowling for 54 years, and today he caused quite a stir at the Miramichi Bowlerama. Richard obviously understands that angle of incident stuff. He established two new provincial records for seniors, and he did it by bowling four strikes in a row. Great game, Richard. Great. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I think I'm safe in assuming that's a lifetime high for Richard. And just in case Richard's record-breaking performance isn't enough, well, here's a special message from Greg for all you five and ten pin bowlers. If he's presently bowling big scores regularly and easily, this will give him something to really sink his teeth into. It'll frustrate the hell out of him. Good God, you get a lot of self-satisfaction. The best buy around is your 